What's up YouTube? Today we are looking at the brand new Arturia Augmented Voices. Is this the next generation of Dalai Lama vocal synthesis thing? Or is it just another VST synth? Let's dive in and have a look. As you heard in some of the quick examples, this thing sounds absolutely incredible. When I first opened it up, I was like, how are they doing this? Is this some kind of new vocal synthesis, physical modeling, or something like that? And so I was very intrigued. I wanted to dive into the synth engine and have a look a little bit further into it. So Arturi actually released, I think the augmented series comes in two parts. There's the augmented strings and the augmented voices. I may be wrong in saying that under the hood, they're very similar synthesizers. It's just that the presets are designed for very specific tasks. Obviously in the augmented voices, the presets are designed specifically for voices and that kind of thing, and strings for strings, obviously. So I think that augmented strings was actually released for free as like an intro version. Unfortunately, in the free version, we don't have access to the advanced panel, which allows us to actually dive into the synth engine and have a look at what's actually going on under the hood, which I think is very interesting. This allows us to maybe learn a little bit about different ways which we could maybe create sounds in our existing plugins or, you know, it just allows us an opportunity to learn from other sound designers and stuff like that, which I think is very powerful. So immediately after I flipped over to the advanced panel, I noticed something interesting that it looks like the augmented series of synths is almost like a revamped pigments, so to speak. It's got a very similar kind of layout and architecture and a lot of the synth engines and a lot of the effects and modulation capabilities and stuff seem to be the same. And the way it's kind of laid out with the modulations running along the bottom here, obviously in pigments you have your LFOs below it. Yeah, modulations are on a separate panel. I kind of like how the interface is kind of cleaner. Although that being said is I kind of wish there was a dark mode. I may be wrong in saying that I haven't found dark mode. I don't like plugins that are too bright, especially because I'm doing videos and stuff. So the lights in my studio um, are very bright. So it just makes things a little bit easier to read for darker interfaces. So Arturia, if you're listening to this, a nice update could be to add a dark mode to the plugin. Um, but anyway, that's small stuff. Let's look at um, exactly how the entire thing is kind of put together. And I think the easiest way to do so would be to create a brand new preset. In other words, initialize the preset. So here it's kind of designed around two layers. You have layer A and layer B. So it looks like layer A is limited to samplers. So you can load in already processed vocal uh, samples that Arturia has kind of curated for us. Um, there's 
just straight up uh, clean vocal samples like R's, E's, and all that kind of stuff like that. Um, and obviously, these are pitch, uh, these are key track to the um, notes that you punch in and everything. Um, so there's two samplers built into layer A, so you can kind of mix them and do all sorts of interesting things um, and blend them to create a kind of sampler tone. And then there's layer B. So if we jump back to the uh, less advanced panel, you've got this morph in the middle. Essentially what this does is this morphs between our voices, which is the samplers, and our synth engines, which are layer B. So this giant morph controller in the middle here is basically a mix between layer A and layer B. So as long as we understand that, um, it will just make things a little bit easier. Say for example, you're trying to kind of uh, design just the synth engine and you wanna get rid of the voice for now. Um, you could just jump back to the regular menu and morph it all the way to the side that you need, or you could just turn down the volume of that layer in the advanced panel. So now we have just the synth engines, which we can go in and kind of fine tune and create some uh, cool tones, which we can layer with some voice samples. So if we click at the top here, we'll be able to actually choose from a bunch of synth modes, which look like they are derived from pigments. So we've got the analog, the granular, the harmonic, and the wavetable. Each of them have a kind of specific set of presets built into just that little module, which I think is pretty cool. Um, it allows you to kind of get going a little bit quicker than just, you know, initializing the whole patch and kind of building things from scratch there. It's kind of like slightly modular in that each one has its own little preset and stuff, which is really cool. So anyway, we've got a granular. We can choose one of the kind of presets that are built into the granular module. Okay, so we've got some cool layers in there. Now we can go at uh, look at modulating them, adding effects and that kind of thing. So let's jump over to the effects section. So we're a bit more limited here than we are with pigments in terms of the effects. I believe you only have um, two effects for layer A, two effects for layer B, and then master effects. So it looks like by default there's delay and reverb on the master effects. Um, and it doesn't look like you can actually choose um, which ones. Uh, like different effects and stuff here, although each of these do have different algorithms. For example, we could choose like tape delay and convolution reverb, for example, to get like different tones.
So this one is quite a CPU killer. There's obviously a lot going on um, under the hood, you know, in terms of the types of layers that you can add in there. You can have up to four layers going on. I think the ability to kind of create presets and have a much easier way to play them, you know, with the macros and everything like that. I, I always think that's a very powerful way to sound design, to kind of get really deep and technical, but then allow yourself a very simple way to play them so that when you kind of jump back into it at a later stage, you're not daunted by all these crazy technical controls. It's like, you know, morph A and B, we've got the delay and reverb controls here. So we can really kind of just play the sound now and not worry about all the things that we've kind of, uh, that we've thought about in the sound design process. Wow, that is super, super powerful. So yes, unfortunately, it's not the next generation of vocal synthesis. I think it would be, have been really cool for Arturio to have included the formant and speech synthesis modes that we see in the Microfreak. Um, I think added on top of this entire like voice system. Yeah, I think to have maybe a speech vocal thing could have been really cool. Um, just a nice way in plug-in format to get those kind of speech Speak and Spell, I think they're called, is the speech synthesis that we get in the Microfreak. Obviously, that was derived from the Mutable Instruments Platz module. But yeah, I think I kind of expected to have seen something like that in the plugin when I first read about it. So yeah, Arturia, if you're listening to this video, if you're watching this, it would be great to maybe see in an update, like I said, a dark mode and maybe some speech synthesis modes. I think that would have just kind of rounded it out uh, nicely. That being said, is I still think it's an incredibly powerful plugin just for what it is. You know, it's simple, but super effective. And the presets, my gosh, as you heard in the beginning, I might play out with a couple more at the end of the video. These vocal presets here are superb. They're absolutely incredible. Um, I, I haven't dived into much of the other presets. You know, myself, I'm not much of a preset person, but I think when it comes to vocal things, they're kind of so hard to get perfect. Sometimes it's nice to just have a preset to, as a starting point, and then you kind of render that as a sample, stretch it, chop it, and do all sorts of stuff like that, and do all sorts of stuff like that. I think that's super powerful. Anyway, I think that's about all that we have time for for today. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you are thinking of picking this plugin up, let me know in the comments as well if this tickled your fancy. Um, I think for, you know, the Cytron's gated, the Cytron's gated vocal things, just to have a plethora of presets that you can feed into Transgates, I think is super cool. So anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. As always, if you haven't yet, consider hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel. So Arturia did actually send me this plugin for the purpose of this video. In fact, they did actually update my V Collection 8 to the new V Collection 9 pack. So I'm going to be doing a couple more videos. I think the Korg MS-20 um, seems pretty cool as well. I know there are a couple of other ones that already exist, but I always enjoyed the Arturia take on things. They kind of always add a little bit of sparkle hidden in there um, just to kind of beef things up a little bit more or to kind of... You know, for example, like the Buchler thing, that extra modulation system that's kind of inspired by... Uh, uh, anyway, I could talk for days. So anyway, let me know what you guys think. A big thanks to Arturia for actually sending me this plugin and the uh, entire V9 collection for the purpose of this video and some further videos. Um, yeah, see you guys next time. Cheers. <laughs>